It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Lonnie Alamito, the head volley- head softball coach at Florida State University. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. How are you? I'm doing great. Can you, can you talk about how you got started in coaching and softball? Um, I think it's just because I played and I played lots of sports. Um, I... Actually, I think I wanted to be a sports broadcaster coming out of college, and I went down to Barry University after I was at um, University of Oklahoma, graduated University of Oklahoma, went down to Barry, was going to get my master's down there, and was in the process of getting my master's when a job opened up at Stanford, which was close to home, and uh, I thought, you know what, maybe I'll give this whole coaching thing a try, and jumped in with it and fell in love with coaching, and here's the story 20-some-odd years later. <laughs> Where are the places that you've coached before besides Florida State? Um, So uh, before Florida State, I was at UNLV in Las Vegas. Um, Before UNLV, I was coaching at Stanford. Um, And then before Stanford was Barry University, the Division II down in uh, Miami Shores, Florida. Can you talk about what you've accomplished at Florida State since you've been there? Um, I think probably the... The thing I'm most proud of is um, the consistency of our culture, um, building the successful culture. So yes, we have a national championship and um, we've got quite a few accolades in the areas of ACC titles and, and things that are on the outcome part. But I can tell you, Brandon, I'm probably most proud of just the process piece and the every year challenge of continuing to create and protect our culture and continue to grow and give it from seniors to freshmen and as the as the program continues to grow. Can you talk about leading Florida State to one of the best in the country for softball? Um, I think it goes back to what I, what I just said about culture part of it. Um, I think when any coach, when you get into coaching, um, you have to look at it two different ways. So do I, I want to be a transactional coach or do I want to be a transformational coach? And um, the game has given me so much sport has given me so much. I wanted to give that back. I wanted to let the kids, the, the student athletes come in and let the game transform them into the person that they are going to become because of the sport. Granted, when you get hired, especially at a power five school, um, the transaction side's very important. If you don't have the wins, then no one's going to keep you around. So the balance of being transformational and transactional is, is quite huge. And I feel as if over time, um, my staff and I have, have figured out that balance and very proud of that balance. So um, I think that that's one thing that um, I really, truly appreciate and enjoy. Can you talk about the 2018 season winning the College World Series? Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to be the last team standing? You know, who doesn't want to be the the last business standing? Who doesn't want to have that elation of outlasting um, so many? And I think that's the the goal right now for any spring softball team, starting baseball team. You know, we're all starting to grind it out right now for the ultimate goal of being the last team standing. Um, We were fortunate to feel that. I I was fortunate to be a coach of a program that, that, um, we ended the season with a W and that was really, really awesome. But I tell you the lessons I learned were from the 2017 season and the 2017 team. Um, We ended up losing super regionals at home and it really uh, taught us a lot of lessons and really guided us on our journey for 2018. And so uh, firm believer in the highs and lows of life and the highs and lows of sport. Uh, if you can sustain and continue to keep your vision uh, and your feet grounded in what you're doing and really take the lessons you learn from when you don't achieve something you want to learn from it, move forward. And that's what the 2017 season did for us as a program to be able to hoist a trophy in 2018. How close were you in 2020 to almost hosting a trophy? I know that COVID did take away the season, but how close were you? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, we were only 23 games in. So, you know, I, I think that um, we we're just trying to figure ourselves out a little bit. You play a 60 game season. So that's just the, the beginning half. We haven't even jumped into our ACC conference yet. So um, I do believe that we were on the turn to something special. I don't think we were playing um, as sharp at that point, but that's also part of the journey. And uh, we had uh, 10 new faces in our program. So, you know, there's one thing to implement culture when you're practicing. It's another to implement culture and, and live the journey when you're playing too. So I feel like we were in that first segment of growing as a team, um, kind of forming together as a group and then COVID hit and we didn't get a chance to see it through. So we're actually trying to learn those lessons, have a lot of talks about them right now as we start our new preparation for the 2021 season. Can you talk about your time at UNLV? in LV? Yeah, I um, really enjoyed um, being a, a rebel. Um, I was hired to replace a coach that had been there a long time, a, a very successful coach, and um, they had a very successful program there. And um, just like Florida State replacing Coach Graf, um, I think everyone gets their time where their lull hits a little bit and someone else comes in and fully respected um, the coaching staff that uh, I was taking over for at UNLV, just as much as Coach Graf here at, at Florida State, but also time to re-energize and induce a little bit um, um, from the values that we're bringing into the program. And so, um, boy, we set some records there. You know, we've got some really young kids going. I was only there for five years, which seems maybe about, you know, like five years, but it was a short stint to really see it through. I, you know, I think it takes three to five years to really get the culture ingrained into what you want to do day in and day out. And uh, so, you know, I think we were doing some good things there and gosh, I, I so lucky to have met so many amazing kids in that program that are now coaching in the game of softball and are part of this growth at Florida state too. So it's a big family and uh, very grateful for the opportunity at UNLV. That's so wonderful. Can you talk about your time at Stanford as the assistant coach? Yeah, so Stanford um, was a little more of a journey. I was there for 10 seasons, and um, I came in. Um, the PAC um, was the conference to beat. This is uh, before the SEC opened up with softball and the ACC and um, Big 12. Uh, you know, the, the Power Five wasn't really that big in softball because the PAC is a little more history. You think of UCLA and Arizona and you know, even Cal with the, the number of national championships they had. So when I went to Stanford, we were more club sport minded. Uh, we had two scholarships to offer by the, when I got there um, as the assistant coach. And we grew that program. So John Rittman is the head coach at Clemson now in the ACC. And now I'm here at Florida State. So together, him and I for um, 10 years put blood, sweat and tears into that program to win the first ever regional to go to the first ever in our world series, um, to attain uh, four time all Americans like Jessica Mendoza. So, so we live the growing side of, um, a tremendous academic school to put academics and athletics together. And, uh, that's what they do so well out there at the farm. And I really learned a lot of lessons, um, and how to balance, uh, the academics and the athletics and, and get the most out of each player to grow as a person on and off the field. So, very proud of what we did for the Cardinal and even more proud now that one of our former players is the head coach and Jessica Allister. And again, I go back to the full circle. There's this really huge, awesome family in sports and we have a very special one in softball. That's so wonderful that one of your former players is now the head coach. <clears throat> Can you talk about playing at St. Mary's playing softball? Uh, so I, out of college, I, you know, many of us older coaches, um, played multiple sports in high school and multiple club sports at the time too. It wasn't year round. It's really jumped into at a young age, you play one sport. And at the time I, I did not, I played a lot of sports. So, um, softball wasn't that big and where I was from. Um, but I, I was okay at it. And, uh, I had this opportunity to go out to St. Mary's in San Antonio, Texas and pitch and hit for them. And, um, you know, going away to college, um, going away to the, to the state of Texas, uh, all little unique and different things for me, but really enjoyed it. Um, and after a year, um, felt as if I wanted a little bit more of a challenge 
and not really knowing what was out there, uh, came back and my club coach at the time was the assistant coach at University of Oklahoma. So I, I learned a ton of things about the NAIA system, the NAIA way we were at the World Series. We'd done a lot of things with St. Mary's. And then I was able to go play volleyball and softball at the University of Oklahoma for three more years and um, was able to grow as a person, not only being away from home and two sports and, and a new level of competition, um, but as a player too. And um, we drove, broke through the top 25. You know, you feel like you're a little part of that. Every time you leave a program, you leave it better. And um, obviously Oklahoma has continued on to do great things in softball. And I feel like I'm one of those pieces of the brick that layered that success there. Speaking about Oklahoma and playing for Oklahoma, what was the transition phase for you transferring to there and playing two different sports? Yeah, I think the, the multiple sports part, um, it is way different nowadays. It's really hard for kids to be able to do that. Um, then we didn't have as an extensive fall season. So um, I wasn't the greatest of volleyball players, but I could play a little defense as a little more back row specialist. Um, and uh, something that I really like to do is just try to be in shape and, and do the conditioning side of it. So I did make the travel roster. I did travel with them and then I was a part of that and I was very proud of that. But my end goal was to be the best softball player I could be. And so um, I was giving what I could to the volleyball team to make myself um, a little bit more versatile and um, learn a little bit more about a different culture to help our culture with the softball team and, and leadership skills and so on. So, um, so I, I think that transition of having two sports, I didn't play two sports at St. Mary's. Um, I, I think the other part of playing at the University of Oklahoma is um, at the time, um, football was kind of digressing a little bit at the time and basketball, uh, Coach Tubb was there. We were the number one team in the country is basketball. And so I was around two um, high profile, big time sports and at the University of Oklahoma and the state of Oklahoma at the time, those were like two professional sports. So coming from California, um, colleges weren't on that pedestal, like when you started to come out to the Southeast or in the Midwest. And so I got a feel for that. And so for my coaching time, as I moved on, I got to understand um, what it's like in different regions of the United States and, and different levels of play. And I really appreciate my NAI days. And I really appreciate my big 12 days, big eight at the time. If we want to talk about history a little bit, it was the big eight, now the big 12, but um, did learn a lot and uh, really grateful for those moments. Can you talk about the recruitment as a head coach for the for Florida State softball? Yeah, I think um, recruiting is, you know, they talk about the lifeline of your program, right? It's a bloodline, it's a lifeline of your program. And, and of course that makes sense. But I think over my time, um, what we've realized as a coaching staff and a program is um, you have to have the right fit. And the only way you're gonna know the right fit is if you as a coaching staff know the culture and the values of your program. And so it's taken us some time to, to figure that piece out um, because it's really hard for me to bring someone into our family, to our team, our organization, if they can't flourish and grow as a player. And if our values don't match the values that they want to challenge themselves with daily, then they're not gonna be able to play a high level of softball because they're not gonna be comfortable with where they're at. So, you know, I think it's twofold. I definitely know recruiting is quite important, but um, we try to recruit the person. Um, we try to evaluate the person to make sure that um, they're allowed to grow. They only get four years, you know, very few get to go on and play some professional or Olympic level sport. So we want to make sure that we give them the best opportunity to become the, um, the most comfortable in their own skin to be able to play at the highest level they can. What does the official visit look like on the softball side? Ooh, I think that's changing nowadays with COVID. <laughs> the official visit's probably going to change. Um, but, you know, I, I, if you were to go back a couple years ago, um, as people bring in people to visit, uh, of course, there's the normal things, you know, of what you're going to do daily from your weight room to your training room to your academic advising. Um, probably one of the most important things for us is to make sure that we get them around the team and the team gets around the recruits. Uh, it's, um, of course me as a coaching staff member and, um, we as coaches, when we get together, you know, we, we can see what we want to see in the players, but we have to have the players to get comfortable around each other too. You're bringing someone into a family. So, you know, you got to make sure that, uh, 
not only are we all in, the team's all in and the recruits all in. So we spend a lot of time together as a team from dinners to breakfasts to who knows, card games, you know, things you do with your family on a Thanksgiving weekend um, that just really engage in being um, personal and trying to really get to know one another. Can you talk about as a player, how it feels whenever you put on that Florida Seminoles jersey to feel if that's at home? Yeah, well, you know, I think that I wasn't one that was lucky enough to play here. Um, so, you know, I, I can think about my days playing at University of Oklahoma and what the jersey meant to me there. And then when I get here, you know, I, I try to talk to them about um, how special it is to wear the jersey. And it's very unique. Um, every team's different. Every team has a different makeup. Every team has a different journey. But any player that's played here and has worn the jersey and graduates from this program, that's something special and unique to them and them only. And uh, I think we really try to make sure that we understand the growing process of it, um, but that you represent something bigger than yourself. You represent the 390 players that have played in this jersey before you. You represent the alumni of Florida State. You represent families and parents, coaches. Like there's so much to when you put the jersey on. Your name might be on the back of it, but it's the garnet gold. It's the Florida State University, you know, logo, and um, it's something very much bigger than you. And we really try to educate them in that. That's so inspirational. What advice would you give upcoming softball players that are looking to get recruited to the next level? Um, I think that it's really easy to chase things that are um, glamour and glitter and all that, you know, Hollywood style stuff. But the genuine inside person that you want to be, you've got to find that match. And everybody knows that, right? Do I fit in a big school, small school? Do I fit in a town? Do I fit? Um, am I a pitcher within a pitching group of six? Am I a pitcher that's only got three other pitchers? like really genuinely know deep down inside what you want out of your experience and go seek that out. Um, to have coaches line up and roll out the red carpet for you and do all those things, it's awesome. It, it's so cool to feel that um, courtship, I guess, in the recruiting process. But it's just as much as your responsibility to find the place you're gonna go. Four years is special and it doesn't matter where, you're, where you go, you're gonna make it. Um, you know, I think that you make the jersey, you don't just put it on and it makes you, right? You're the one that puts the time into it. You're the one that, that creates the, the person that's wearing the jersey at the time. So make sure you're comfortable where you go so you can grow as soon as your feet step on that campus. It's very inspirational. What advice would you give upcoming college coaches that are looking to get into the profession? Um, so I think for um, being a coach, one, I'll reflect back to what we talked about earlier with the transformational and transactional. I think you, you've got to figure out your why you're doing what you do. Um, the ultimate goal to raise a trophy and win at the highest level drives everybody. Uh, I, you know, I, I think that any business, any corporation, you know, from money to um, status to whatever it is that drives people, um, you know, measurements, motivation. And, and when you put awards on the wall, that that's, that's motivation, right? It's the measuring of, of your success. But truly deep inside is what you've got to feed. And if you don't feed your soul to what you want to do, if you don't know why you're doing it, that chase can be there for a while, but eventually it's going to start to show up and you'll get burnout as a coach. So if you truly know why you want to do things, um, I'm here for the growth of each one of our players. And it continues to inspire me every single year and every kid I, I talk about to our support staff about this all the time our players come in 18 year old 19 year old every single year like we get older we get smarter we get more experience we're staff members they come in the same age with the same growth opportunities getting up going to class feeding themselves making sure they're on time every year it's the same thing and if your why is about them graduating four years being the best version of themselves, then your growth, you don't get burnt out as a coach um, because you're generally just refueling your inspiration to put, pour yourself into them. If your purpose is only to throw trophies on the wall, then that, as you get older, that could burn you out because those kids need 
growth, they need opportunity. And that's really hard to do. It's hard to put your vision of winning the highest level into a, a person that's trying to grow into who they are. So if you go back to your why, it, it'll inspire you and, and definitely ignite that flame for what you want to do daily. That's very inspirational. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with Florida State Seminole Softball at? I think Seminoles.com. You can pull up softball right there. And, um, you know, we I try to be on social media a little bit here and there, but I definitely have my my uh, Twitter handle and some Instagram stuff. But um, yeah, I, I think if you just go Semmels.com, everything's on there. You can find me, our roster, our players, the whole nine. And would love to to inspire anybody if they want to take the road that, that I definitely took. Thank you again for your interview and best of luck in this upcoming season. Hopefully COVID does not ruin this upcoming season for y'all. <laughs> You're right. Thank you so much, Brandon. You take care. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Lauren, for your interview, and best of luck. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.